So confidence intervals are super handy because they allow us to take some point estimate of a population parameter. So let's put some of those parameters and statistics up here. So what these confidence intervals let us do is it lets us take a point estimate of, that we get from basically doing a statistic. So you know we take a sample and we figure out the sample mean or the sample proportion. With that information, we're able to make some estimation on where we think that the true mean or the true proportion lies. So if we're dealing with categorical data, we're dealing with the you know, true proportion of, I don't know, people who are redhead or the true proportion of people who approve of a political candidate. And what we can do is, as long as we know what the sample size is and the proportion, the sample proportion that we find, we can also do a confidence interval for proportions, which is really neat. So the basic concept is the same. We're still going to be taking our point estimate and then doing plus or minus the margin of error. So here we're going to use as our point estimate we're going to do p plus or minus our margin of error. So what we need to now know is like okay well how do we calculate out our margin of error? Margin of error is actually very simple and it's very similar to how you calculate it for the means. So the margin of error is very simply when we're doing a two-tailed test, we'll do a one-tailed test in just a second. But for two-tailed, this is going to be z alpha divided by 2 multiplied by our standard error. Now our standard error here uh, takes just a second to do, but it's going to be the square root of p times p complement divided by n. So this right here is what we are going to name in this scenario as our standard error. Okay, we've already covered about how to calculate out this z and it's the same between if we're doing it with the means or if we're doing it with proportions. We still need to figure out our alpha and remember that our alpha is still just 1 minus our confidence level. And so for our confidence level, remember that has to be given, oftentimes it's 95%, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It could be 80% or 99%. And to get our alpha, it's just 1 minus the confidence level. Quick review on that alpha. Remember that alpha is, in fact, the percent of the time, on average, that we're going to miss the true population mean using the testing scenario that we are in. Okay, so we've got this guy, and the only way that this thing works uh, is if we still satisfy the central limit theorem. And so in order to use this guy, we need to say, okay, does our p times our sample size and our p times 1 minus the sample size, does that still equal uh, greater than or equal to 15. So let's put that up. So for the central limit theorem, remember that n times p and n times p complement, both of those need to be greater than or equal to 15. If they don't, we should probably just hold off from doing this, uh, this confidence interval because uh, this method in order for us to use this method, we need to be able to say that the sampling distribution is approximately normal. And we're only able to do that if our sample size is sufficiently large that we've got at least 15 successes and 15 failures. So once we do that, though, it's the exact same methodology uh, as we used with our means. We take the sample proportion that we have, plus or minus the margin of error. This is how we get our margin of error, the z-score and our, our standard error here, which is the square root 
of the sample proportion times the complement of the sample proportion, all divided by n. You take the square root of that guy. And so that's how we do a one or a two-tailed, let's put that up. This is a two-tailed confidence interval. Now, if you want to go and do a one-tailed confidence interval for proportions, uh, the change is actually quite simple. Here's all that, that we have to do. Let's go ahead and just erase a few things. So let's erase this plus and minus. These still hold. Central limit theorem still holds. How we calculate alpha still holds. Uh, but this, remember, if we're doing one-tailed, we're throwing it all. Uh, all of the error to one side. So let's just draw a picture of that real quick. So if we're doing two-tailed, just conceptually, we're doing this, where we're throwing some of that alpha error onto both tails. Now if we're doing one-tailed, we've got two options. And it just depends on how what the problem is asking for. So on one, we could be asking that some value, the mean of the proportion is at least some value. And the other one is that confident that it's no more than some value. So we've got the one tails, we've got the two tails. So if we're in a one tailed situation, let's erase this out now and call this a one tail. The only thing that we have to change is we don't divide alpha by two because we're throwing all of the error to just one side. And we are going to be doing, remember it's this plus or minus instead of this plus and minus. Okay, so we would go either this plus route or, whoops, we'd go this minus route. So we can kind of go this way or we can go this way depending upon which way we want to go. So if we want to say that, you know, We'll say 95% confident. That the, the true proportion is at least is at least some value we would be doing this one tail, saying that it's at least this critical point, might be bigger, but we're saying that we're 95% confident that it's at least, so let's do at least is going to be P minus margin of error. And if we say instead of at least is at most, if that's what we're trying to say, in our confidence interval statement, we can put that at most goes to P plus the MOE. So when we're doing the confidence interval, we really have, uh, have like one job to figure out. Uh, and it's we need to figure out, well, I guess it's a couple more than one, but we need to figure out what our sample proportion is, and we need to figure out what our margin of error is. Our margin of error is slightly different based upon if we're doing a one-tailed or a two-tailed. One-tailed, the alpha is just like this, Z alpha. If it's two-tailed, it's going to be Z alpha divided by two, because we're putting our error into two tails instead of just one. And if we're doing one tail, we have to figure out if we are going to subtract this margin of error or if we're going to add the margin of error to our sample proportion. And the way that we know which one we're going to be doing is basically what are we trying to say? Are we trying to say that it's at least some value or are we trying to say that it is at most some value? And uh, we will, in a future video, do an example of how we can actually plug in our values and get an answer for this.